So these are some of the other suffrage murals, both in the U.S., but also in some other countries to show all these different design styles. So some are direct, just history images, but some are much more modern interpretations. So local Ida Walker was one of the first women elected to uh, the Kansas legislature after suffrage passed. So in looking through the newspapers for information on Ida and the things that she wrote, there are also some really great ads. So this would have been of her era, but also tying in to uh, the courthouse imagery that, that's here in Norton County. Mm -hmm. So using some of these Art Deco design styles to frame out the story, but also inform what the design style and what the text style might be. There's something that just really sets it in place, especially when you have the vignettes. You've got the title and the textile, but you have those embellishments. It sets it in time. So in Ida being in the legislature in the 1920s, it just made sense that design style-wise, we'd go with some Art Deco, but mm -hmm. also pulling from the newspapers of Norton. So it really ties it into the community. Well, the most important part is getting a baseline that's level. So uh, it doesn't seem like much, but it is the basis for everything. So we've got a baseline established. Uh, we know about how long the mural is gonna be. And dun, 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 the lift was delivered. So the baseline is um, at seven foot. It'll actually be a little bit lower than that. So. This will be the bottom of most of the mural. There'll be some descenders, but mostly from the six foot line up. Okay. Uh, the bulk of the work will be right at two feet below the windows, except for Ida. So Ida is the central figure. She's also the leading figure. And her head will land right in between those front two windows. So this is gonna be Ida leading the way on the basis of the suffrage movement that really made her legacy possible. Uh, I've got marks on the curb at every five feet, and I believe it's gonna go up to the 70 foot mark. So it'll probably okay. start five foot back to the 70 mark, so it's going to be a 65 foot long mural, anywhere from 10 foot to about 14 at its height, so an average out of 12 foot by that, 65 foot. That's a lot of space you're going to cover. Any yeah. idea how many square feet of paint we're going to get on this thing? Um, not every inch of that will be covered, but mm -hmm. you can use that as the multiplier. So do a 65 by 10, that's 650 square feet. just a rough sketch um, so that we can get layout and placement correct. So this is the big Ida figure. Again, her head's going to be in between those two windows. Her boot tip is going to be about at that seven foot mark, five foot in from the beginning. So we go from Ida. She'll be holding one of the papers that she and her husband printed. Uh, she's being backed by the Kansas State House. There's going to be some symbols hidden in from all of her civic groups. Got the old courthouse, because it would have been up while she was serving as one of Norton's first jurors. Uh, the school in Alameda, and also Sod House, because again, this is the Sod House to State House story. Uh, and then we get into the suffrage part that made all of that possible. So we've got liberty, justice, and equality, sort of unifying the country to make Ida's legacy possible. Um, it takes a while to map it out, so for the next couple days I will be making some grids and doing some initial sketches. If I can't get the right drawing material, then sometimes those initial sketches are in paint. Well, it 
it's been a stormy couple weeks, so I've been stealing time as I can because it's color time. <laughs> I blocked out the color on a digital version, and right now I'm doing the really large color blocks so that we are gonna start getting a feel of what the final mural is gonna look like. Mm. Some days are slower than hoped. Some days are faster than hoped. I anticipate three more painting days and then two days for final top coat. So by the end of this week, everything will be done to the naked eye. And by the end of the next week, it will be done to my eye. Um, so today I was working on some lettering. Uh, there's only one building I have left to do, which is the Almina School that okay. Ida Walker taught at. And then um, I usually step back a ways and make notes on what needs to change. Like, are, the, are there enough flowers in place? Does everybody's face look like they're human? Um, do the buildings look like they'll stand up on their own or not? And that's, what, that's the little tiny stuff that kind of finishes everything. simple things take the longest time. So at the end here, um, the Western states were the first to give equal suffrage and they sort of brought equality to the Eastern states. So these Eastern states in the U.S. setup are a bunch of reaching, grasping women and they're all super simple forms and really dynamic because it was taken off of a newspaper illustration. And I thought, oh yeah, those are just a couple brushstrokes. That'll be three hours tops. It was not three hours tops, it was eight and a half expletive deleted hours long. It took all day. And that was one of those things where you, you have what you think is gonna happen, you have what you hope is what, gonna happen, and somewhere in between is what really happens. There are some really surprise elements, like there, there's a logo in the middle that is a Food Administration logo, since Ida Walker was um, head of the Food Administration for Kansas, um, also was a special appointee at, uh, during the administration. And some of the dimensionality on there worked really, really well quickly. And so that was a really great surprise day. Erica Nelson through a leadership retreat in um, Northeast Kansas. Erica Nelson is um, part of the Mid-America Art Alliance and she was specifically on the Centennial Women's Suffrage Mural Committee. So the organization had decided to um, that they wanted to participate in this Centennial Women's Suffrage Mural Program. Erica Nelson uh, reached out to several rural communities in Western Kansas that she had been working with over the past year, um, sharing about this specific project, the Centennial Women's Suffrage Mural. And um, she just was basically trying to get a background idea of how many communities had women that kind of fit this representation of women's suffrage in Kansas. And it was through that um, I had been working on some research for our community for a different project, and I had saved all this information on Ida Walker. And I just kind of on a fluke threw it out there and said, hey, do you think she's a fit? And she said, possibly. And so I put our name in the hat when she, um, when she 
put out the applications uh, to this, these groups of rural communities and um, we were chosen as one of the four uh, locations for site visits. Um, the Arts Council had actually been working on, you know, had been talking about putting murals in Norton um, for several years. So this is our, had already been on our radar and we already had a collection of walls that we were kind of already looking at. Because it's funded through federal money, there were um, restrictions on, you know, changing um, original brick or original limestone or anything that was an original um, facade of the building. So then we had maybe five to six um, walls that I took Erica to. And during that time, during the site visit um, of looking at those walls, I also shared just the history of the community. And, um, and that also influenced the general direction that our mural went. We first had a meeting, a community meeting, um, just so that she could introduce herself to the community and see if there were other things that, you know, other history points or um, just unique, specific things that I didn't know that the community might be able to share with her. So we had a community meeting and she shared kind of her preliminary ideas and um, she spent a month here prior to starting to paint researching. And so she visited our county museum. Um, I think she talked with our city manager um, just to make sure that we had all of our ducks in a row to get this uh, mural started. How are you painting that so perfectly? And she said, oh, it's a, it's a paper plate. And I'm like, okay, a paper plate. She used a template from a paper plate and she shared that she went to the farmer's market the night before and she had this paper plate and she still had it and she used that for the template for these sunflowers on Ida Walker's dress. And what I think is really interesting is Ida Walker really loved to garden. Um, she sold, I want to say one year, one of the newspaper articles I read about her, she had a huge strawberry garden and she sold $400 and this is back in the 1920s. 1930s, she sold $400 worth of strawberries in one season. So I think it's just kind of a, a neat way that there was a little bit of our farmer's market right there on her dress. And then if you also look elsewhere on the mural, you'll see a little bit of the strawberries that she grew. So they're painted on there as well. So she hid these little gems as she learned more about Ida um, in within the mural. And so it really have to spend some time with it and look at each piece because she spent a lot of time putting little minute details um, that is if you research Ida you will you will know what the hidden message there um, within the mural but I see this as a, a real opportunity for us um, Erica is well known in Kansas and I don't know that we know that here locally um, but there's a lot of people that drove to Norton specifically to see her work. And so I think that's really special that, that we have this here as our, one of our first major mural projects. It, it helps us share who we are without speaking words. You know, it's a visual way to experience our culture here.